I sold this lawnmower to a friend and he used it twice. As you can see, the thing's in pretty good shape. Um, so I thought I was selling him a really nice lawnmower, right? Which I was, but unfortunately it started leaking oil after uh, the second use. And I've determined, you see all that oil there? I've determined that it's coming from the pan gasket. So unfortunately, I'm going to have to take this engine out and replace that gasket. So you folks get to watch. And it's a good engine. It's a Briggs & Stratton 18 and a half uh, horsepower OHV twin. But unfortunately, I've had a couple of these come in that have had the, uh, the oil leaks uh, on the pan gasket or the oil sump gasket. And it can be hard to determine where a oil leak is coming from when you're trying to chase one down. Uh, but the best thing you can do is just look very carefully <clears throat> and uh, oil flings around a lot when the engine is running but I mean if you look you can tell that's the wettest area and the oil leak can pretty much only be coming from you know, the oil filter area or this pan gasket so unfortunately it's that gasket I bet you all the bolts have loosened up there's only so many places an engine can leak from Make sure to disconnect the headlight wires. And then as you pull up, you lift up and the thing comes right off. Jack this baby up. All right, I have a handful of sockets here. Hopefully, I'll grab the right ones. Whoops. We'll start with the 916 socket. I don't think I need to take that off. I'll have to take this off. I'll mark where the cables are at and then remove the cables. It looks like it's a Torx bit couldn't find a pin to mark these cables, so I'm just going to scratch them a little bit. Alright. According to this, it's a T25 Torx. Pull these cables out, pull right out, there we go. So we have the cables loose, I'm going to move over here and uh, see what wires we need to disconnect. So we have the starter cable to disconnect, that's just a 7 16 nut. Um, then we have to pl unplug the main wiring here. Squeeze these two tabs, wiggle it till that sucker comes out of there. There we go. And it looks like this wire that goes up to the headlights. I'm going to have to disconnect that too. All right. All right, so let's get this off of here. So it looks like the last remaining thing would be the fuel line, so we're going to have to disconnect it. All right. So you can see this engine has a fuel pump right here. It doesn't matter where you disconnect it. Um, I think I'll disconnect it right up here at the fuel pump.
there will be some gas that comes out, but as long as you keep the tip of this fuel line above the gas tank, no gas will flow out. This little clip, you just pull it right out. So I'll just position this up high like this, get it out of the way. So I just tucked the fuel line back up uh, in there for now. As long as the end of it, the end of the hose stays above the gas tank, it won't spill out any gas. Okay, so now that everything is disconnected uh, up above here, we're going to have to start disconnecting things from down under. It looks pretty wet under there. I better get a blanket. Yep, the old yellow blanket. You guys might have recognized the yellow blanket from previous films I've made. I'm going to lower the deck just to give myself a little bit more room in there. Okay, let me show you where these bolts are underneath. I'm going to use this uh, pneumatic impact driver to take all these bolts out. Uh, this part can get kind of tricky if you don't have the right tools, but it can still be done if you're determined. So you can see the first thing we want to remove is the uh, the main pulley bolt. And then we have four engine mount bolts. You can see one there, one there, and there's two back up in there that we need to remove. And then this engine will come right out of here. So. This part can be really tough if you're just using a regular socket wrench like this because the, uh, the pulley spins when you're trying to loosen that bolt. Some of the ways I used to get around that, well, I would use a pair of vice grips up on the pulley collar there and try to lock it in place. It's pretty old school. Another way I learned how to do it was to use a big old socket wrench and once I get it in place, I would whack it really sharp with a hammer. And I would do that several times and eventually it would break that bolt loose. Even though every time I hit it, it would spin, the pulley would spin. Eventually uh, doing that worked. However, today I'm going to do it with this here. Much easier. Get it in place. There we go. Hopefully the pulley's not locked onto the shaft. Yeah, it moves. That's a good sign. So now I need to disconnect these belts. So you have your deck belt and you also have your drive belt up there, you can see. To take off that drive belt, uh, you'll want to lock the parking brake on the machine. That'll loosen it for you. And on this one, you push down the brake and you lift up this lever while you're doing it. That locks it in place. Now that should have loosened that drive belt. Let's go ahead and take the, oops. Go ahead and take the deck belt off of here. It's usually pretty easy. You just to take the deck belt off, you just take it out from the keeper and work it around and it comes right off. Now do you see you see how loose that uh, drive belt is now that we put on the parking brake? So that should just be able to slip right off. Oh, there we go. So that's what that looks like. You can see it has a, um, if you look down in here, it has a keyway, so you have to make sure to line that up when you're putting it back on. And now you can see the other uh, motor mount bolts. There's one there, and the other one is hiding up in there. To get the motor mount bolts, I'm going to use a shorter extension and a 9 16 Gotta hope none of these break, because that really sucks when that happens. Woo! All right, to get to these other ones, I think I need a shorter extension. I'll just take this one off. 
I'm not going to be able to hold the camera and get to that one, so I'm going to put the camera down. And this is all I had to remove, was four motor mount bolts and the pulley bolt. Lower this baby down, down to the ground, and one thing that's kind of interesting is these exhaust pipes just set down in, into the muffler, so you don't have to worry about removing the muffler. The pipes just lift right out of there. And this flap's in my way, so I'm going to take it off. that off before we mount the engine back up well one thing I should have done first was drain the oil uh, I didn't do that so I'm gonna go ahead and just put it on this little this old pressure washer stand and drain the oil okay I finally got it loose I had to turn off the camera and kick it a few times didn't want you all to see that So since my workbench is stuffed full, as usual, and I don't feel like lifting this thing, I'm just going to work on it right here on the ground. Okay, time to take this thing off. So these are all half-inch bolts. One. try to keep track of these things. Now there is going to be some oil that comes out of here. It looks like I might have to take off the governor clamp here. Uh, I'm hoping not to not have to do that. Uh, anyways, to get this lower part off, you usually have to give it a couple good wraps and you can hear it when it starts to come loose. Yeah, I can already see it crack, the crack there, so just got to work this baby off. nothing will jump out at me. So I will have to take off this spring it looks like. I was hoping to not have to take this bracket off but I think I'm going to have to. Oh that's bent. That's no good. Looks like someone really cranked down on this thing at one time. Remember to keep track of where these springs go and the linkage. Okay, and here's the great reveal what it looks like in here. Okay, that's what the inside of that looks like. Everything looks pretty good in here. Be careful not to let any of these gears fall out because they're all timed. You'd have to um, match them up again. Here's your governor mechanism. That's still working. Now what we have to do is just clean this old gasket off of here. That's usually the hardest part. Because it has to be spotless. I'll also have to clean the, uh, the gasket off of here. Governor lever. Everything looks pretty good in there. Nice and clean. 
you got to watch it because that piece down in there is what uh, works your oil pump and that can fall out but I'll show you how to put that back in we're also going to replace the main seal here Okay, see how clean that gasket surface is? All the way down to bare metal again. That's how you want it. As you can see, the gasket surfaces are now clean enough to eat off of. Very little remnants of gasket. Uh, I should probably take those little black specks off. But as you can see, that's about as clean as you can get. If this gear happens to come off, so that's your cam there. Uh, if it falls out, or this gear falls off you'll just want to make sure to line them back up and to do that you line up the, the dots here see the dot on the cam and you have a dot there on the uh, the smaller gear well you'll line those up but if you do it right those won't even come out and if the cam falls out you're gonna, going to be in a world of hurt because you'll have to uh, you'll have to adjust the valves and put the push rods back in and all that now when we put this thing back together, you can see on the end of the cam here, there's a slot. Uh, and that's the slot that goes down into the oil pump. Alrighty, so I told you about the little doohickey uh, down in there. Uh, we're going to call it an oil pump shaft. Uh, let's go ahead and pull it out, since we're going to turn this upside down anyways. You can see it goes in one way. So I need to revise my earlier statement uh, about where leaks can come from. Uh, as I mentioned, it can come from your main oil sill here. It can come from the, the big pan gasket. You can also have an oil leak coming from the drain pipe, as I mentioned. You can also have an oil leak coming from the drain valve on the oil uh, filter. Uh, if the oil filter is, is loose, of course, it can leak there also. Uh, but I did forget to mention the governor shaft uh, usually has a seal on it and uh, sometimes they'll leak so and you have your oil pump uh, gasket that can also leak if these bolts loosen up so there's quite a few places it can leak from so just try and pinpoint it um, before you start replacing parts because sometimes an oil leak over here can show up over here it's just weird that way. Oil kind of floats around, so make sure you know where it's leaking from before you dive in. And I'm going to clean all this up so when I reassemble it, <clears throat> I can keep a close eye on it to see if uh, any fresh oil is leaking. Okay, so here you can see the, uh, <clears throat> the part number on the seal. And this is the part number on the gasket kit. I noticed that uh, <clears throat> when I was buying this gasket kit, there was an option to purchase the kit that comes with the bolts. And uh, since it was from Briggs and & Stratton and they were offering that kit, I figured it was probably a good idea. Maybe a hint. As you can see, the new um, bolts have Loctite on them. We'll go ahead and install these and update this engine. Looks like maybe a newer style gasket too, which is a bit thicker. That's a good idea. Briggs and Stratton is always good about um, updating uh, the parts that uh, need updating. And it looks like in this case that gasket needed to be updated and these bolts came out pretty clean. Y'all ever seen one of these? It's a seal removal tool. Unfortunately, I tried to use it as a bearing removal tool one time, and I chipped off that end. It's not a bearing removal tool, by the way. It's a seal removal tool. And here's how it works. You just stick it right in there. Hold on. Hold up. Before we do this, we need to take a very close look at how deep this seal is pressed in there. Uh, sometimes they're not <clears throat> pressed all the way down against something they're you know you only press them in so far so as you can see I don't think I have anything that measures that small but 
as you can see the seal isn't flush it's kind of sunk down just a little bit so when we reinstall it we'll have to make sure that it's in that exact position take a close look folks you don't want to set the seal in too deep or too shallow that's where it goes all right let's pop this baby out of here when you can use a screwdriver but if you have the right tool it works pretty easy here's the old seal it wasn't leaking but I figured uh, I would go ahead and replace it they're cheap whoops so here we are I have my new seal I'm gonna make sure to uh, lube it up a bit just with a little bit of motor oil the outside especially and I also want to do that to the mounting area here make sure it's good and slippery and let's see if we can push this into place I'll try just to push this into place got to make sure it goes in even otherwise it'll uh, you'll get all messed up <clears throat> Just make sure you press it in even. So this one's pretty this one's pretty tight. I don't think I'll be able to press it in by hand. Okay, so what I'll try and do is... So I have this big block of steel that's been rattling around my shop for years. I think I'm going to put it on there and try and press it down evenly. You could use anything, a small 2x4, just something that goes flat across the surface here, such as this. Here, how it started change the tone I know it's pressed in now see look at that it's perfectly flat but we need to go a little bit deeper I looked at the manual and it says verbatim slightly below the mounting surface so we need to get this oil seal down a little bit more I think how I'm going to try to do that first is by using the old seal uh, put it on upside down here real careful I don't want to sink it in too far but see by doing it this way I know that the seal is going in, going in evenly for the most part see it looks like we're pretty good on this side but I'm not so convinced this side is down as far as it needs to be it's not uh, this side went down a little bit farther, so it's okay. We just need to we just need to find ourselves something to tap it down in. I think I'll use uh, let's see here. So I just want to make sure it's good and even. And I have a giant sock my, my giant socket here. I'll tap it around until I'm satisfied that this seal is in evenly all the way around. So I ended up pushing the seal a little too far down uh, from where I wanted it, but as you can see it's completely uh, even all the way around. And looking at the shaft here, <clears throat> I think it's going to be just fine. So we're going to try and run it.
so I think what I'm going to do at this point is turn the engine <clears throat> upside down or almost upside down anyways make sure I have out make sure to clean out everything so there's nothing uh, there's a lot of little pieces of gasket that ended up in there that I had to clean out clean off the gasket surface Sure to clean out the threads. The gasket goes on dry. You don't have to put on any uh, gasket sealant or anything like that. Perfect fit. And now it's time to take off oil pump cover here. It's a Torx bit, looks like it's a T30. Oh boy. Oh man. Yeah. Okay, I'll show you what's in here. You can see the oil pump uh, setup is quite simple. Well, I've removed the bolts. This little cover comes off. You have your O-ring, which is the seal. And you have this little doohickey in here. It goes around and around. So remember we took the shaft out from underneath. I'm going to go ahead and take this piece out. All right. Set it aside. The shaft. You can see the shaft goes in it like this. Lube up this shaft really good so the oil seal slides on. Don't want to damage it putting it on. Alright. You can take this little piece out too. Doesn't matter which way it goes in. Okay. Be very don't forget your dowel pins. That's important. Gently put the cover on, and keep in mind you have to line up the camshaft uh, to get it into that hole there. You don't want to force anything at this point. I think I'm going to clean off. end of that shaft. It's starting to rain out here pretty good. Okay, it's starting to slide into place. You can see where it's getting hung up. So I want to try and ease it in there. So I don't damage the seal when I put it back together. want to force it on. I don't know if you guys can see what's happening there. But right there, the lip of the seal isn't going into place. It's kind of stretching a little bit, so I want to ease it on so I don't damage that seal. Looks like I just have that bottom part to get now. Ease it into place. There we go. I'm gonna tap it ever so lightly. You can see it's going into place. All right. Everything's in place. So we're on. It's uh, all the way pressed down, the seal held up, and down in there you have the camshaft, and hopefully you can see that it's slotted there, so remember it goes in this way, you just want to line, line that up with the slot. It'll go down once it lines up. 
put this bad boy back into place. And then, uh, and then this piece goes on. There it goes. And now we just have to, now we just have to clean up the lid and reinstall. Take the O-ring off, put it in place, and then reinstall the cover. Make sure the surface is clean when you put this back on. I'm not sure what the torque spec is on these, but uh, you want it tight. Tight enough so it doesn't leak, I guess. Alright, oil pumps back together. So you have 10 bolts here, and they all go in in a certain pattern. Uh, I'll show you how to do that. So with the paperwork that came with the gasket, it states uh, we need to tighten these down to 300 inch pounds. Now the original service manual here states uh, to 200 inch pounds. So that's further indication that Briggs and Stratton has updated uh, these bolts and that gasket with new specifications. They also give the sequence on which bolts to tighten down. It says first you tighten them down one third of the way in the sequence and then you tighten them down two-thirds of the way in the sequence and then you fully tighten them down in the sequence. If that makes sense. Okay, so pay attention. Here's the tightening sequence. The first one we tighten down is... So I have all these torqued down in the proper sequence now. Uh, to about 180 inch pounds, 200 inch pounds, and I need to do the final torque. My uh, inch pound torque wrench doesn't go up to 300, only goes up to about 150, but I have a foot pound wrench here, and I did the conversion. 300 inch pounds is equal to 25 foot pounds, so I'm gonna set this to 25 foot pounds, and we're gonna cinch these bolts down. There we go, 25 inch pounds, and I'll add two. So we're at 27 inch pounds. That should do it. Time to put the uh, governor back in place. And uh, this linkage here that came off. Put that on first. I had to take this off and stick a screwdriver in there and pry it open so I could fit it back over the shaft. I just want to let, show you all uh, I have everything back together. For some reason this linkage was bent in the wrong way so I bent it back to where it's uh, in proper position. See that components working and that's how the spring mechanism connects and that's how the larger spring connects back in there. And this one I'll connect after I adjust it here. So what the manual states to do is hold this into this position. You can feel the spring resistance. And then you turn the governor shaft clockwise all the way. And then you lock it into position by tightening this bolt. Let's see if I can do that with two hands. I think what I'll do to make life easy on myself is put this in position and then we'll just clamp it so I don't have to worry about holding that. Okay, so now I want to rotate this shaft. You can see it only moves a little bit back and forth but I'm going to move it all the way to the right clockwise and then that's where I want to tighten down. Hold it in place if I can.
hopefully that's uh, tight enough there. I'll hook this one back up. I'll hook it up to this side first here. All right, we are done. Ready to go back together and test out. up here starter motor all right hook up the fuel line too I have my four motor mount bolts. Now for the pulley, just don't forget to uh, line up the key with the slot on the shaft. You'll want to make sure that when you put this upper belt on, the drive belt, yeah, just make sure the belt's on the inside of that wire keeper when you push it up into place. Use the big boy wrench for this. And you just wrap the blade belt around. Turn the pulley a little bit. Make sure that it's on the inside of the belt keeper. Okay, so I marked these cables. Hopefully I can still find it. Yep, there's my little mark. Now we just have to figure out which one goes where. Because I forgot. Let's see, that one's the choke. And... Assuming that's the choke there, yep. Okay, let's get some oil in this thing. According to the book, it takes two quarts. Oops, I still have to put the muffler back on. Hopefully this thing will hold oil and not leak. And here you can see the muffler set up. Basically, this heat shield that I took off uh, is what helps mount up the muffler, put the muffler in place, just like that. Luckily it's going to stay for us. Put this dude on. Oops. Well, I bet you that bolt ended up in Europe. Anybody see where that bolt went? This is what always happens, damn it. Finally found it. Let's test this baby out. The 
uh, carburetor has to fill up with gas again because I drained it all out and I turned it over. So I've ran it several times now and I don't see uh, any signs of a, an oil leak. I don't know if you guys can see up in there but the seal does not appear to be leaking. No leaks. That's a good thing.